Hello, welcome once again. Addressing the issue of a viewer who asked a question about uh, light switches and problems with the lights coming on the car. Let's go to a general diagram of how these things work. So we have to refer to these parts. What's the first thing that we do when you look at any schematic, regardless of what um, components there are? We always look for main components. Well, the first thing that grabs our attention is we don't bother about the fuse. We don't worry about the connectors, the splices. We worry about main components. These are main components. So under hood light, inside light and mirror lights, this catches our attention. Okay, what else catches your attention are the switches. Okay, now, let's say he has a, pr a problem. You know when you open up your hood, some vehicles, not all, there's a light. So let's say you're working at night or you're working in a dark area. You need that bulb to come on so you can see, obviously, what you're doing under the hood. Now, his problem is light is not coming on. Okay, sometimes after... if after you do shut off the vehicle and these things happen, that you see that the light stays on like a parasitic drawer. So that's not his case. His case is it doesn't come on at all. Let's start uh, simple by simple from the diagram because so, I had some also some beginners who said they're confused again about tracing diagrams. We started off by saying, look at the main components. If we If our problem is with the hood light do we worry about this no do we worry about the dome light no we don't worry about these things we come to this now the question is how does this connect to this hot at all times here it is now you don't need that switch that says uh for low or high high beam you don't need any switch it does it's it made automatic we start over here, hot at all times. That means it's always connected to the battery. We start with a fuse, okay? On this side, it says 14. On the other side, it says, uh, um, the number of the fuse is 14. It says 15 amps. So when all these lights are on, we cannot draw more than 15 amps, okay? Which is usual. We come here, current flows, we're going to draw it. Current flows from the battery, it gives us 12 volts. We're going, we're coming out the other side of the fuse. How much should we have if the fuse is good? 12 volts. So let's come out this way, okay? This is just the gauge, the wire gauge, 0.8. The color is orange wire. We come to something called a splice. If you see, now there are 40 here, 40. That's just a configuration of the, the circuit tracing. We don't have to be concerned about that. We only have to be worried about the color of the wire, the splices, and the connectors. We come to a splice, okay? Coming down this way to a splice. The splice means we have more than one connection, as we see in the diagram. We can either go this way to these lights, but our problem is not with these lights, so we're not going to go in this direction. We come to this direction, and sure enough, on the hood light, that's his problem. So we're going to go which direction? from the splice, let me focus, we're gonna go this way, current flowing this way. Same orange wire as this one, okay? Over here, over here, over here, oops, over here. Now, what do we connect, what do we come to? This is a symbol for a connector. So, one side of the connector is orange, the other side of the connector labeled C2, C211 is also orange, from orange to orange. Now we come to another connector. So this is our second connector, okay? Our second connector, and we're still at orange. Orange, orange, orange. We didn't change color. So we come into this connector, come out of that connector, come into this connector, come out of this, um, this connector, which is C101. We come to the bulb, and there's another connector over here to the bulb. Labeled A, terminal A, labeled B, is the one that goes to ground to the switch. This is the one that comes on. So when you, again, when you lift up your hood at night or whatever in the dark area, we need this to be illuminated as he does. What happens? Current is at a standstill. It comes to this point and it says, I need a path to ground. 
Why do I need a path to ground? Because I need a complete path from positive of the battery to go back to ground. And where does ground go to? Back to the negative. So he goes, so current is flowing here, as we said, comes into the bulb, goes out the other way. Terminal B comes out, comes in terminal A, goes out terminal B. We went from an orange wire to what? To a gray wire. Okay, so if you go to the connector that's connected to to the light to this to uh, the bulb, the bulb, you're gonna have two wires. One is gonna be orange, and one is gonna be gray. The gray is gonna go to ground. Now, now here's the here's the whole thesis of this. Now, over here is a switch. When you open up the hood, what are you doing? You're actually closing a switch. So, this is what you have to think. With the hood closed, this switch is in open position. It's not connected to ground. With the hood open, I'm closing the switch. Now I have a path to ground. And that's when the light comes on, as you see. So it's a switch that goes from the open position to a closed position. You open the hood, but you close the switch, just the opposite. So he says, you know what? He doesn't see it come on, okay? Can it be the bulb? Absolutely, of course. We all know that, right? I don't have to make a video to, sh to tell you that, hey, a bulb could be the problems when it comes to lighting systems. That's nothing new. If it is the switch over here, I should be, here we go. If we measure, and we're not going to measure, we're not going to go to the, to, to the light to measure, but if we go to terminal A, how much should I measure? We said it's 12 volts here. We went through a splice. We went through a connector. We went through another connector. Did we lose any voltage? No. We should still be at 12 volts. When we are closing the switch, where, how much should it be? We should be at what? Zero volts. Where did we lose all the 12 volts across? The bulb. This is the voltage drop across this bulb. Okay? So, if this switch is good, we should be at zero volts because we are connected to ground. If this switch is not good or it stays open, we're going to be at 12 volts. That means no current is flowing through this. Now, ask me, he asked me a question. Can it be the fuse? If the fuse is bad, number one, we measure 12 volts on both sides, so it can't be bad. Number two, even if we don't take a multimeter to measure this, you look at your other bulbs. Are, the other, are your other bulbs good? That means obviously it cannot be a fuse problem. Okay? Number three, you're not going to have a, a fuse 15 amps just for one bulb. That means all the bulbs together are connected to the fuse when they are illuminated. That's in the state that all of these are on, they pull 15 amps. This is not going to pull 15 amps by itself. Okay? Now... It cannot be the fuse. Can it be this wire going in here? And then, therefore, these are still lit? Yes, it can. It can be, if you take this wire out, oops, this orange wire out, guess what? No 12 volts here. This will not light. Can it be this connector? Yes, it can. Can it be this connector? Yes, it can. Can it be from the connector to terminal A? Yes, it can. Why? Because this is in series, whatever is open in this branch, this light is affected. Can it be now this gray wire? Yes, it can, even though it's after the bulb. Can it be the switch? Most definitely. Most definitely. Okay? So if your fuse is good, right, I would go for... Besides the bulb, uh, the obvious choice is the switch. This has to be in a closed position. This is not closing when you open up the hood. Let's take another scenario, okay? Now, I know I'm moving the camera, but as you see, I have to zoom in to get the sight, to see these, these letters. Like I said, so many years of doing schematics, your vision is not the same, so um, I have to focus in. Now, you see two branches over here, we just said. We came, we came to this splice, we went this way before his problem, okay? Let's say now, interior lights do not come on. What do we pick up on right away? We focus on these bulbs. We don't care about the, we don't care about the light from the hood. We don't care about that. We focus on one, two, three, four, five main components of the schematic, okay? And we go over here. Now, let's go. 
over here, still an orange wire. We come to this point, okay? This point has many points. One point goes to the light and mirror assembly. The other point goes to the rear courtesy and reading light on the left, and the other one goes to the right, okay? Also, we have a dome light, okay? Now, think about this. Here it is, current is flowing, current is flowing, current is flowing, not voltage, current flows. Current flows, and now what, where do we are? We have a black wire. How many colors on this wire? Only one, black. We come to this connector that goes to these lights. Where does the output of this go to? Right here, let's follow it. A goes to 156, right? And then it goes to this one, interior. Where does this go to? <clears throat> As you can see, this goes to either the ground. Let's go this way. We went this way to the black wire. Now we're going to a white and orange stripe wire. We're going this way. We're coming to now an orange wire. We went from white to orange to orange. All right, to this one. And now we go to this one. So this one in this position, this, this switch can close it to ground. <clears throat> That's all we need is a ground. If we go to this position, we're putting on all interior lights when this is in this position. This is low beam, high beam, interior. Interior means all of these lights will come on. <clears throat> Here's the problem. His interior lights are not coming on. Okay? Can it be a ground problem? If And I was asked, what does G306 mean? Or G. G signifies a physical ground. G is ground. 306 is the, is the location of that ground physical wire or cable to that, like an engine block or something. So therefore, it denotes a physical one, as opposed to the computer, which gives a ground when it needs to. It's not a physical ground. So we come to this point. We come over here. We need this switch to be on interior. We also need these switches. You can open up the dome light. When you open up the doors in your car, guess what? The lights come on, okay? So... Are we dealing with that? No, we're dealing with a situation when I have the doors doors closed and the lights should come on, right? But I don't have that. So what's the common factor? One, two, three, four. What's going to knock out four of these lights in this problem over here? The fuse, of course, the fuse. This one over here, this one over here, this orange one over here, to see to 100, yes, it can knock it out. If this one from here, if this wire was broken, the black one, what would happen? Only this will not come on. The inside light and mirror will not come on. If this was broken, the white orange wire, only these two courtesy and reading lights will not come on. We got to find something common that will knock out all four. That will not let all four light. What's common? The light switch, obviously. When this is in the <coughs> um, interior... Uh, interior uh, mode switch it allows everything to come on when i if this stays in the low position or stays in the high position or in the off position i'm not connected to where to ground so we come to 6200 which is a connector we go to what a white wire we come to where a splice what did i tell you before a splice is something that we have more than one connection but we only see one connection that's because the other part of it where it goes to you see this arrow it goes to another part of a schematic but it does go to one or more connection we come to <clears throat> still a white wire white wire c2 over here a connector terminal b terminal a is the output of what the light switch input is b output is a which i just drew over then we're connected to c1 a splice a black wire actually a black wire splice black wire another connector c100 and then a black wire to ground the physical physical ground so where did we change colors of the 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 wiring from here we went to white to black to black to black if this is not connected to ground because this switch is faulty 
the lights do not come on. <clears throat> if the ground is not good or has re high resistance, it knocks out all of these. I know this is a tough circuit to understand, but this is how the lighting systems work. This is how you attack it. Okay, If the dome light doesn't come on, where are you going to attack it? Well, we can turn it on by in either the interior lights or we can turn it on by opening up the doors. If we turn on, if we open the doors, guess what we're doing? We're closing the switches in this position and this position. So you have to see, if does it work in the interior? Yes, that means there's a problem with this circuit. But not to get too technical, which I already did, by the way. But anyway, <clears throat> remember, <clears throat> when you're opening up a door, in certain situations, you're closing a switch. When you're closing a door or a hood, you are opening an electrical switch. So... <clears throat> Please go to my channel, Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto, my other one, Automotive Electronic Schematics by Joseph. Uh, you'll see hopefully more hands-on. And if you enjoyed or you learned something, please subscribe. Thanks.